Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are simplifying expressions. One like the orange expression you see there. Looks kind of complicated, but we will simplify things for you today. Let's get into it. First off, in this lesson, we are going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about grouping symbols because they're a big part of simplifying expressions. We'll just briefly go over what adding is and then we will get into simplifying expressions. You will have practice with these types of questions and of course have fully explained answers as we go. First off, grouping symbols. If you're comfortable with grouping symbols, you could pause this video now and try these ones out. If you're not, I'll explain what to do and then have some practice questions afterwards. First set of grouping symbols, we'll go with the green question over here. What grouping symbols mean is that you're going to multiply everything outside of the parentheses times each term inside of the parentheses. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Then we join together those terms. 12 minus 8 is 4. And that's our final answer. Now, you could have said, could I simply say, 3 minus 2, simplify what's inside the parentheses, 3 minus 2 is 1, and then 4 times 1 is equal to 4, and absolutely you could with this first example. However, when you get variables, like in our orange example, you can't simplify the things inside of the grouping symbols, and that's why we practice this type of question. Let's go ahead and solve in the exact same way that we solved the first one. We're going to multiply 7 times 3x, which gives us 21x. We'll multiply 7 times negative 2, which gives us negative 14, and those two terms are not like terms. There's 21x and four, negative 14. Or in other words, 21x's and negative 14. So that is our final answer in simplest form. Can't join them together. Here's some practice questions. Try pausing the video and try these ones out on your own. Three, two, one, go for it. Welcome back. I hope that you tried those out. I'm going to walk through them pretty quickly. I'll do 7 times 2, which is 14, 7 times negative 4, which gives us negative 28. We join together those terms because you can just subtract. 14 minus 28 gives us negative 14, and that's our final answer. Again, if you wanted to simply um, group or simplify the things inside the grouping symbols, you would have 2 minus 4 equals negative 2 and 7 times negative 2 would give you negative 14. So you can double check your work there. Now let's look at this one with the variables. We have 8 times negative a, that will give us negative 8a. We also have 8 times negative 3, which gives us negative 24. This is our final answer in simplest form. Now let's talk about this term adding. Sometimes in the past, maybe you've been told adding is increasing. And I want us to think about adding a little bit differently because adding is not increasing. Let me show you an example. 14 plus negative 5 is equal to 9. This is decreasing 14 to 9, but we did it by adding, right? So I would rather think of adding as joining together like terms. And, and that's a way for us to think about it. And it's a little bit more accurate when we move forward into adding positive and negative numbers. So just, I know it's semantics and it's just a phrase difference, but I just want us to remember that adding doesn't always increase. All right, that's it. Now we're going to look at simplifying expressions. These get into the larger problems, like the one that we saw on the introduction screen. Let's get into these and how would we solve these larger problems. If you feel confident simplifying these expressions, pause the video and try it out. And then I will give a full solution afterwards. Three, two, one, go. All right, let's take a look. What I do when I see these huge sets of parentheses is I just simplify. I multiply whatever's outside times each term inside. So negative 1 times 3y gives us negative 3y. 
negative 1 times negative 5 gives us positive 5. Negative 1 times 4y will give us negative 4y. Now I join together like terms. In other words, the negative 3y plus pos negative 4y will give us negative 7y, and the positive 5 remains as a positive 5. That will be our final answer for this problem. In the next expression, we have a 5x by itself. That's just going to be written down. Next, we'll start multiplying that negative 2 times each term inside the parentheses. Negative 2 times 4x will give us negative 8x. Negative 2 times negative 9 gives us a positive 18. And then we join together the like terms. 5x minus 8x gives us negative 3x and positive 18 remains the same at the end. So there we go. That is our final answer for this question. We now have some practice problems, similar but a little bit different from the ones that we just did. I want you to pause the video, try these ones out, and then I'll go through a full solution of each expression. Go. All right, time to look through it. In our green question, I'm going to begin by distributing that negative 5 times each term inside the parentheses. Negative 5 times a gives me negative 5a. Negative 5 times negative 6 gives me a positive 30. And then the negative 3a simply gets written down. It's outside the parentheses, so we don't have to multiply anything. We just write it down. Now I'm going to join together like terms. I have a negative 5a and a negative 3a. They both have the variable of a, so they are like terms and can be joined together for a negative 8a. The 30 has nothing that it's, it's just a number, and there's no other just numbers there. So our final answer is negative 8a plus 30. Now we look at our second problem over here in the orange. And you notice that there is a 7x that can be just written down. We are going to have to multiply 3 times 8x, which will give us a positive 24x. The negative 1 and positive 2x all just get written down. There's no other simplifying. This, this is actually a pretty simple first step. There's just that one piece of multiplication. And now we can join together like terms. There are three terms that have a variable of x, so we have to make sure we're joining all of those together. 7x plus 24x plus 2x will give us 33x, and we do have a constant, that negative 1 that needs to be written down there on the end. That is our full, final, simplified expression. Now we're coming to the one, the question that was at the, in the introduction slide. I have this one here for you to practice. Go ahead and try that out. See how you do, and then watch my full solution. All right, the 6 is a 6. We're going to multiply 3 times 2x, which gives us 6x. 3 times negative 1 gives us negative 3 and our 4x on the end, we can't forget about that. We're going to join together like terms, and in this one it's a little bit complicated because we have two x terms and two numbers. So it's a little bit more complicated. Um, yeah, what are we gonna do? Well, 6x minus 4x gives us 2x, and 6 minus 3 gives us 3. When we're writing expressions like this, we always want to write the variable or the number with the variable first and then the constants or just the numbers on the end. So even though the 6 appears first in the previous line, we will actually put 6 minus 3 is 3. We'll put that at the end. So this is the correct way to write the final simplified expression. If you did write 3 plus 2x, that's not wrong. This is just a better way to write it. And it's the standard way to write it. So you'll see it written in this form moving forward. Numbers with variables go first, and then numbers are added on the end. I hope that was fun for you. I hope it was helpful. 
couple things to just remember. We had first, we simplify everything inside grouping symbols, then we join together just the like terms and simplify as much as possible. Hope that was helpful. Have a wonderful day.